Ambient storytelling is an art which is constantly brought up when one talks about the effects of mythos and world building in fiction. For a narrative to be immersive, which can catch the viewer's attention easily, the story's vision requires layering and textured details of the seemingly irrelevant and small things in the world building, so that the illusion of this reality can be made more effective. And mixing this ambient storytelling with fantasy world building is often complicated and confusing. The writer has to build a new world from the scratch. The laws of physics, faunas and floras have to be different than our own but familiar enough to be seem plausible. One of the many animes that does this is Made in Abyss. The world building shown in this anime is nothing but extraordinary. But still many people fail to understand the setting even though they have explained it in so much detail. The entire world building of Made in Abyss revolves around a giant gaping pit that ascends tens of thousands of meters underground. The one who lives on the surface of this pit fears it, worships it and treats it like a god. Only a few have been able to explore the depth of this pit and have returned unscratched. And it's these people who are looked up upon by the ordinary citizens of the city that is built on its surface. The Abyss is a colossal pit discovered 1900 years ago around the island of Southern Ocean of Belox. This vertical hole has a diameter of 1000 meters and is at least 20,000 meters deep, with its exact depth being currently unknown. It possesses a unique ecosystem where lies a remnant of ancient yet advanced civilization. Many have challenged this mysterious abyss pursuing countless hidden treasures and relics of the immense value. Some are treasure hunters looking for artifacts while others are explorers determined to unveil the secrets that this abyss holds. To explore the abyss, valiant cave raiders called as Delvers emerged and the town of Oz was established at the age of the abyss. Over the period of years, a large town known as Oz has developed around the abyss. Almost all the main characters of this anime belongs to this town. The town is divided into five key districts, the central, north, west, south and east. Further down in the south district, the Wharf is a region that was once used by illegal divers to explore the depth of the abyss. Since many aspiring delvers have settled all around it, it has slightly sunken down into the abyss and is apparently the lowest point of the earth. The other one is the Gondola Station which is legally used by some of the most renowned delvers is located in the west district. Known as the Grand Pier, it is the only other known station that often draws a lot of attention when proud teams of delvers return from their adventures from the depth of the abyss. The Gate to the Netherworld is another well-known landmark of the earth which leads to the pathway that can be used as a primary route to the first level of the abyss. It is heavily guarded at all the times and no one can pass through it without proper authorization. The exact locations of the gate is unknown, but it is located either in the south or the east district and is in an anti-clockwise direction from the Belkero Orphanage. This is the orphanage where all of our main characters were living. The abyss still contains many sections that has never been seen and carries many dangers. Hazardous habitats that defy common sense and otherworldly creatures adapted to a unique environment are major obstacles to explorers. This great pit also appears to have some form of time distortion. This is evident by an explorer called as Ganja who has arrived at the abyss at the point in a time before the first delvers and the native tribes still existed. Yet, according to Vezukan, only 150 years have passed since the creation of the village at the Iblu in the sixth layer. The white whistle delver Ozen claims that the deeper one delves, the more one's sense of time breaks, with the effect becoming extreme from fifth layer onwards. As an example, she noted that people might intend to stay on the fifth layer for just two weeks, but by the time they return to the surface, several months have passed. Ozen considers it as a possibility that time speeds up the more one descends. Though the abyss is riddled with countless dangers and hazards, one of the greatest challenges facing Delvers is in fact the ascent from it. This is due to the phenomena called as curse of the abyss. The term refers to a series of symptoms that manifest upon ascending while inside the abyss, with its more scientific name being the strain of ascension. The effects of the curse manifest after ascending around 10 meters within the abyss and there is no way to avoid it through the conventional means. The curse affects all living things. However, the creatures living inside the abyss has developed ways to sense its flow and avoid it. 
the curse results from piercing the force field of the abyss while ascending although this fact is not generally known therefore areas where the force field is weaker also results in effects of the curse being less severe in certain specific places like nanachi's hideout and the village of ill blue the force field isn't presented at all and so the curse doesn't occur either there are total 7 layers to this abyss which goes deeper and deeper as we move up in the number the first layer being named as the age of the abyss compared to the deepest part of the abyss the first layer is the only section that is considered to be relatively safe it pans down to the depth of 1350 meters beyond which the second layer begins even the atmosphere at the first layer remains pretty much the same and is nothing more than a training ground for the inexperienced red whistle delvers The most common alien animal species found in these parts are hammerbrake, silfang, crimson split jaw and demon fish. Since this small stretch of gassy rock faces is pretty shallow, the one who reaches this point only suffers from mild strains of descending like nausea and little dizziness. The second layer is called as the forest of temptation. This layer's depth starts from 1350 meters to 2600 meters inside the abyss. When someone enters this layer they feel intense nausea headaches and numbness of limbs the forest of temptation is the truly first dangerous section of the abyss the fauna and the environment suddenly changes turning into a tropical rainforest with huge vegetation the creature that inhabits this layer are much more dangerous deeper in there is an area known as inverted forest where the trees grows upside down and the wind blows hard Here an observation camp has been built to serve as a resting point for delvers. After that starts the third layer which is called as Great Fault. This layer ranges from 2600 meters to 7000 meters. When someone enters this layer they starts to feel strains of the ascent in addition to the effects that I mentioned in the second layer plus vertigo combined with visual and auditory hallucinations. The third layer consists of a 4 km vertical cliff making it a highly challenging area to cross. Countless methods have been implemented by many in order to attempt a descent to varying effects. Aerial predators are common in this area including crimson split jaw. The next layer is the fourth layer which is called as the goblets of the giants. This layer ranges from 7000 meters to 12000 meters. This starts to feel strains of the ascents plus everything that i mentioned in the third and the second layer then intense pain throughout the body plus bleeding from every orifice in this layer a strange humid jungle of strong vines weaving to form a giant concave disc that captures water from the air earns the name of its fourth layer the goblet of giants at 9000 meters marks the famous garden of the flower of resilience an area which is filled with eternal fortunes which is a trademark flower for the abyss a truly beautiful site though the dangers from the bees that dwells here is very very high the next layer is the fifth layer which is called as sea of the corpses this layer ranges from 12000 meters to 13000 meters And when someone enters this layer they start to feel everything that I mentioned before plus the complete sensory deprivation confusion and self harming behavior this is the thinnest layer of the abyss vertically being only 1000 meters deep but the widest one horizontally probably around 10 meters wider than the town of orth it consists mostly of large monster field seas with some crystallized sections held up by a thick layer of dense mud This is the last layer of the abyss where it is possible to bear the curse and return alive and intact. An ancient ritual site Edo front which became a lab by Bonbread and his crew acts as a gateway into the sixth layer with the point of no return. Moving on to the sixth layer which is called as the capital of unreturned. This layer ranges from 13000 meters to 15500 meters. Anyone who enters this layer feels the loss of humanity or even death. This is also called a white whistle's last dive. A human who tries to ascend from the sixth layer either comes to death or is deformed beyond recognition. Hence the name, the capital of the unreturned. In Earth, there is a rumor about golden city at the bottom of the abyss, which originated from the sixth layer where the runes and the majestic city sleeps undisturbed. It is not uncommon to come across creatures of an irrational danger level here. In this secluded area of the sixth layer an entire village inhabited of Narehata called Ilbu was formed
and after this we are moving to the last layer of the abyss which is called as the seventh layer the final maelstrom which ranges from 15,500 meters to unknown meters and anyone who enters this final layer is certainly gonna die this is the final known layer of the abyss and not much is known about it but there are many rumors about it transmitted from the last dives of the generation of white whistle delvers which are only passed down via word of mouth by none but themselves this includes the claims that from above something shaped like a ring only a few white whistle delvers are said to have seen and is visible and that's supposedly along the path to the bottom of the abyss creatures which are apparently shrouded in mystery called as the gatekeepers exist over there it was here that Liza wrote that she apparently first spotted a being similar to Reg. No one has reached the deepest point or successfully sent information of it up to the earth. But it is theorized that it is beyond 20,000 meters deep. And this sums up about all the information that we know about the abyss. And if you don't know, Made in Abyss is going to have a second season in 2022. The trailer is also just released few days back. So if you haven't watched that, you can watch that trailer too. And I think that was it. That was it guys. That was the video about the world building explained by me from the anime Made in Abyss. What are your thoughts about this Made in Abyss anime? And if you haven't watched this anime yet, then please go watch this anime because the world building and the characters the story is really amazing in this anime and that was for the video guys and if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my youtube channel because i post daily anime content about top 10 top 5 listings anime reviews recommendations news theories and all sorts of anime content on daily basis so if you enjoyed please subscribe and that was it and i will see you in the next one sayonara